Also, because you were born again, you will know by the Holy Spirit living on where? Inside. Inside of you what to do in some situations in life. Every situation in life, even the ones that you don't know nothing about, the Holy Spirit can give you wisdom. James 1 5 says, If any man lacks wisdom and come to the Father without his faith wavering, and it shall be granted unto him, right? I'm so thankful I don't have to know everything about everything, but I do need to put the Word of God in because every answer for life comes out of the Word of God. And if you'll put the Word of God in, then the Holy Spirit can bring it to your remembrance when you have need of. Even if you don't understand the subject you're asking for wisdom on, there's an answer in the Word of God. Amen? For He is our guide into some truth. All truth. John 16, 13. Just look on the inside. Check to see what the Holy Spirit within your human spirit is leading you to do Romans 8 14 so I'm so glad he'll lead and guide us into all truth and if you don't know what to, you know what the most people's problem is is they don't want to be led by the Spirit of God they want the Spirit of God to bless where they're being where they're going and I found that he doesn't always lead me to the comfort zone but he always does lead me in the right way. And he doesn't always lead me the easy way, but he leads me the right way. Amen? And so, uh, the trouble with many folks is that instead of looking to the Holy Spirit within them to guide and lead them, they are looking on the outside for their answer. They are running around looking for another person to give them the answer they need. And I was this way in a season in my life I was praying. I was looking for a prophetic word. I was, man, I was really, I really was earnestly seeking God the best way I knew how, but I was looking for it to come from everywhere else. Now, listen, prophetic words are great. The prophetic words should be confirming what you already know inside, or at least the inclination that he's been guiding you, or confirming something that you know in that. All right? Or correcting something that you already knew, depending on which stage you're at. But, most people run around looking for something to agree with them or looking for somebody else to tell them which way to go instead of leading to the Holy Spirit. You know, one reason people do that is they don't want to keep their lives in order enough for the Holy Spirit to be able to flow in them. So therefore, they have to depend on somebody else's life who's in order to try to guide them. And that will always lead you haphazardly. Yes, that person can help you and speak life into you, but it's going to be after you fell down and, and stubbed your nose 20 times. Y'all with me? Or, so, uh, let's, let's keep going here. Let me give you an example of someone who just needs to look on the inside to the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. This is Brother Hagen here. We were holding a, a faith seminar in Ohio, and after one of the morning services, a man came up to me and said, Brother Hagen, I want you to pray for me, the man explained his prayer request. For several years, he said, I was a member of a church here in town. Now, Brother Hagen don't go into anything here, but I can tell you there's like a million red flags in this guy's story. You know, he got in a disagreement, he left, he did these things. Listen, uh, if you don't ever disagree with your pastor, you probably don't have a real pastor. Because pastors aren't, agreed, aren't called to be your yes people. They're called to be the ones that guide you and help be the voice of the Holy Spirit, lead and guide you into all truth, train you, correct you, raise you. We're also here to encourage you. We should and, and, and be your cheerleaders and, 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 and cheer you on. But sooner or later, you will disagree with me. But you should never disagree with the word of God. Right. There's a lot more we could be said about that. But he said, I had a disagreement with the pastor, a man continued, and ended up leaving the church. Since then, we've gotten our disagreement all straightened out and we're good friends. Don't you think he probably could have done that if he'd have stayed? Yeah. But for seven years now, I've been going to another church. 
do you know what? I'm going to go ahead and read between the lines for you because I deal with this all the time. What that means is he was tending to another church, sowing his seed into another church, and still expecting this pastor to pastor him. That's what he meant by being a good friend. My phone blows up every week, all week long, from people that haven't been in here in 10 or 12 years. Seven years, six years, and they, get, they still call me all hours of the night, and they expect me to pray for them. And guess what I do? I still pray for them. I still pastor them, even though I ain't seen them in forever. This guy was still expecting this man to pastor him, but out of his bitter bitterness and his, 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 his root of bitterness and his offense, he was sowing all his time and energy some other place, which was a waste of the kingdom resources he got to put in his life. I'm just going to talk real plain. How many know the Holy Spirit was probably trying to talk to him all along? We know he was because he got him to go back and, and make up with his pastor and do those things, but he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And we see that's where Brother Hagin's going here. I'm just pointing it out that much more clear. Hey, he took the glasses off. Somebody think I'm staring at him. Y'all look the same now. now. The man said, recently there have been some developments at the church where I've been attending. The pastor has left, and I have felt like leaving too. Man, another time. <laughs> you know, he felt lead. He needs a good, big old piece of lead and stick it on his table. The next time he can just, you know. <laughs> So I don't know what to do, the man concluded. I don't know whether I should stay at this church I've been intending, find a new church, or go back to the church I left seven years ago. I want you to pray that the Lord would guide me. And Brother Hagin was so gracious. He said, all right, we will just agree together that you will understand what God is saying to you. Because John, because John 16, 13 says the Holy Spirit is our guide. And Romans 8, 14 says as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So he gave him the word. And he said, so I laid my hand on his forehead and began to pray. And I had only prayed a few words when the Spirit of God on the inside of me said, ask him what he's got in his heart. And you see, this is where the Holy Spirit is in your heart or your spirit. That is where you are going to find the guidance you need. The Bible says the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. I stopped praying and I said to the man, open your eyes and look at me. He opened his eyes and I said, dear brother, look right down in your heart, your, your spirit. Don't look at me. Don't look up to your head. Come on, don't get a spirit of reasoning. Don't try to figure it out. Just what's that unction inside your spirit right now saying inside of you? You see, when the blood Bible talks about your heart, it is not talking about the physical organ that pumps through your body and keeps you alive. Romans 10.10 10 says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Well, you couldn't believe with your physical heart anymore than you could believe with your physical nose. Man, it just jumped a whole bunch. Oh, silly guy. I'll get back there. Don't worry about it. your physical nose or your physical foot. No, the heart word at the top of the page is used as an illustration of the heart of the man, the spirit of man. Look down in your spirit, I told him. What does the spirit tell you? When I said that, he responded, I'm going to have to go back to the church I used to attend. I think that's where the Holy Spirit was trying to get him to go all along. I agree. And I answered, that's the answer. Go back to that church then. The Batman knew the answer in his heart all the time. And I want to illustrate, I want to explicitly illustrate here. I believe he knew it all seven years. But whenever it was when he got tired of it that he decided to really listen. Amen. Many times things will happen in your life, some good, some bad, and after you just will say, I knew what to do all the time. Where did where did you know it? You knew it on the inside of you. Why didn't you listen? It would save you many problems if you would learn to listen to your spirit. For the spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord, Proverbs 20, 27. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in our spirits, and he is our guide. The Holy Spirit within testifies of Jesus. And so if you will let the Holy Spirit, he will lead and guide you into all truth. How I many know that's at your workplace, that's in your church, that's in your spiritual life, that's in your physical life. It's every attribute of your life. If you will let him, he will guide you. Even when you're unsure, like me, there's some things I, I, I just told Deaconess, I'm dealing with some areas that I, for, I know a lot about a lot of things. I've been very blessed. 
And I've got a lot of natural knowledge. But right now, I'm in some areas that I don't know a lot. I'm trying to ask those. I'm doing my part. I'm asking the godly men and women in my life that are counselors and know a lot about it. I'm asking them. But I still don't have a lot that makes me feel comfortable. But what I am comfortable in is that I know that I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm doing what He says. And that brings me comfort. Because even if I don't understand it, He makes me look smart. Amen? And uh, so that was free for you. In the book of John, Jesus spoke of another role of the Holy Spirit as he dwells within believers. The Holy Spirit always lifts up the word of God in the name of Jesus and testifies of Jesus. So if you don't have any word of God in you, are you giving the Holy Spirit much to work with? How many know that's why the Bible says that you should... Uh, be a, a workman of God rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. John 15, 26. But when the comforter has come, who is the comforter? The Holy Ghost. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. What is it? So he's a comforter and he's the Spirit of truth. Which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Who's he talking? Going to be talking about? Jesus. Now notice in John 16, 14, he shall glorify me. Who does, is he here to make you look good or Jesus look good? Real, ultimately, Jesus look good through you, but Jesus ultimately. He shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you. So how many knows when he, when, when the, that means that you have a promise of God that the Holy Spirit will show you that thing through Jesus, through the word of God, if you will just stay in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he talks to all of us differently. Some of us he gives visions, dreams. He always speaks through the word, but sometimes he even goes deeper into things. Anybody he ever gave you a picture of something to just confirm so much to you? Or like he'll, he'll tell you and show you things? Like even before service, he showed, he told me some things, and the man who wasn't long, he confirmed his word. Well, you know what that did to me? That gave me assurance that I was being led of God and going in the right way. Do you know he will do that in your everyday life if you'll let him? But here's the key. He will only do as much as you let him. I found that it took me a lot of years to lay down the reins. You know, you can guide a horse, but sometimes you got to really yank on the bit. How I many you know God doesn't want somebody has to yank on the bit? He wants somebody to say that is led by his eye. Where his eye goes, he goes. That means you're being led by the Spirit of God. It's moving that easily. Y'all still with me? Because I'm teaching pretty good. Lord, don't shout me down now. <laughs> so, uh, in John 14, 26, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would be our what? Teacher. How many believes he can teach you? But first you got to admit you don't know everything. First you got to admit sometimes you don't know nothing. I didn't say belittle yourself. I didn't say put yourself down. But, you know, there's lots of things I know nothing about. And there's some things I know an awful lot about, but I'm still being taught about every day. That's John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is what? The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you a couple of things. All things. all things. Somebody look at your neighbor and say all things. All things. That covers all the stuff you know and don't know. All the stuff that you want to know, you don't think you're going to need to know. All things. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> I don't know how to do it. I don't know what's going on. Well, like you Dr. Holy Ghost, I asked him once, what did he say? I don't know. <laughs> you just told me a whole lot right there. Come on. Teach you all things and bring all things to your what? Learn it. To remember something, what have you had to do? Learn it. Learn it. Put it in. That's why you need to put the Word of God in. You know, He can take 20 scriptures from 20 different places in the Bible and bring them to my remembrance and put them together in one power pack punch that deals with the very thing that I'm dealing with. Sometimes things that I would have never, it would have took me a hundred years to dig out together. The Holy Spirit can put it together at once and go, wow! I'll go, wow, that was really good. 
But everybody go, that was really smart. That was really great revelation, Pastor Brian. I know. I know. I just got it too. Wouldn't it be good? Well, yeah, I've been, I've been chewing on that for 20 years, and it's still just as pow now as it was the day that he showed it to me. <laughs> but first, you've got to put it in. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So he wants to speak to you. Not just every once in a while, not on Sunday mornings, not just in that one deep prophetic service. He wants to speak to you daily in your everyday life on a daily occurrence. In other words, the Holy Spirit will make Jesus and the things of God real to you. If God doesn't seem real to you, then I would say you probably need some more of the real Holy Ghost. I wouldn't probably say it, I said it. <laughs> and when you need it, He will bring to your remembrance the Word of God that you have hidden in your heart. Psalms 119, 11. Now, there was a season in my life that I just seemed to constantly be putting the Word in. And I didn't seem to be getting a lot out. Then all of a sudden, one day, the Holy Spirit, man, he just started using it. And you know what? He's never stopped. But there was a certain place I had to get to putting the Word in before he could start drawing back out. And there was sometimes he'd tell me something, and it was almost like it was cryptic. Anybody ever been there? And I'd have to pray cryptic. That means a, a little, it was unclear. It was like a, like a, almost like a puzzle. And, uh, I'd have to try to figure out what he was meaning and really pray into it. It takes some laborious time before I get the full understanding, even like they had to do with, it, with Daniel in his days, and as some of the uh, as uh, some of the people had to do whenever he would talk to the the uh, the Christians in Jesus' time with parables, and the disciples would get it, and some of the others would take them some time to understand what the parables meant. He said that would be that way. So there's times it would be like that parable to me. But as I learned more, I got poured more and more of the word in, the quicker and faster I understood things. The less I had to go and 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 try to figure out what this said. Now, when I whenever I figured out what he was meaning, it was just as powerful to me as it is today. It just doesn't take me as long. Are y'all with me still? All right. The Holy Spirit, our Helper, has made His home in us as believers. All that we could ever need Him to be for us, He is our Comforter. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Comforter. Comforter. No matter what you need, He wants to comfort you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Our Guide. Our guide. He will guide me wherever I will let Him. Somebody, go ahead. He will, he will guide me wherever I'll let Him. There's the key. Did you all catch that? Yeah. He is our Counselor. Listen, he will give you the best advice in the world if you'll let him. So I look at your neighbor and say, our counselor. Our counselor. All right. He's our teacher. He will teach you everything you need. But to be a teacher, you have to listen and obey his words and practice them, don't, don't you? A teacher teaches you the way, but do you get that overnight? No, you get it by practice, right? So somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's my teacher. <laughs> And sometimes you've got to give yourself grace and mercy if you don't get it the first time. Amen. Amen. He is the greater one in us. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, He's the greater one in me. He's the greater one in me. Yeah. Who puts us over in life. If we are conscious of Him, He dwells within us. And if we believe God's Word, that no matter what or whom we face in life, we will have no fear. Well, I've got fear. Well, then, do you really believe that? Do, if you listen, you're never going to stop from the enemy trying to present fear, but you can stop from having fear. Does that does that you guys understand what I'm saying? You know, if you're standing on a cliff about to jump over off of it, you should probably have uh, some kind of fear that stops you. Now, if the Holy Ghost told you to jump, by all means jump. If He didn't tell you, then don't be stupid. That 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 is not fear. That's called common sense. Come on. But uh, if the devil come, you know, comes to you and says, I'm going to kill you, well, I'm not going to fear him because what can he do to this body? Right. So the greater one who lives in us is greater than he that is in the world. If you believe that, it'll change how you focus and deal with everything. He will put us over in life. It means he will cause us to be overcomers in this life. 
If you believe that, it will change how you deal with everything. You know, that is the quickest way to break a spirit of depression is change what you're believing. If you're dealing with a spirit of depression, it's because you've got stinking thinking. So if someone says, that just beats on me more. It does. I admit that. But the truth is, until you start believing who God says about you and believe who the Holy Spirit is in you, you won't break free from that spirit of depression. Look at that. I made it to chapter 5. At 15 to 8, after starting late. <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> what was that? It's a miracle number one. That's right. Glory <laughs> to God. So, I'm going to stop there because you guys don't have chapter 5 yet. <laughs> But next week, we are going to start on chapter 5, finally. It only took me a month and a half to get through chapter 4. So, Pastor Tammy, grab the microphone. Sister Becky, Shauna, Nehemiah. You can't remember something. She Amen. Let's try that again. I didn't quite. You can't remember something unless you learn it first. Amen. Good stuff. He doesn't always lead you through the comfort zone, and it's not always easy, but it is the right way. He is our comforter, our guide, our counselor, and our teacher. He is the greater one in us who puts us over in life. You can always um, encourage someone, and but they have to get the Holy Ghost and listen to him for themselves. Um, God wants to get every person to the place um, to be led by his eye, for he will guide you with his eye. I'll share um, the Holy Ghost to us. One of the things we learned is he's our comforter, spirit of truth. He's our teacher, our guide, our counselor. He'll teach you all things. He'll bring all things to your remembrance. And he's the greater one in me, and he'll always testify of Jesus. Pull the slides out, not the game. You have to let God lead you and guide you, and if you don't, you're not going to get anywhere because without Him, we can't make it. Pull it down. All the way? Wow. <laughs> Something's off. Turn the game up. Yeah, turn the game up. She probably turned the wrong game while we go. The game, she, the ones I told you guys not to touch, she was touching. I think she turned the wrong one. Yeah, she's turning mine and not Pastor Taylor's. Turn my game up some more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's good right there. Now back it back down just about an eighth of an inch. <coughs> there you go. That's good. All right. See, I know what she did always with good. All right. Yeah, tear it down just a little a quarter of more of the game. That's good. Now pull the slider down a little. Just a little. There you go. Now. Now I don't have to project finally. Mm -hmm. All right. And then 
pull Pastor Tammy's slider down on her a little. All right, Pastor. Anybody else got something you want to say? We're Nehemiah. Spirit, and, and he is our guide, the Holy Spirit, with him, testifies of Jesus. Glory to God. Anybody else this evening? I like having that level of volume. I don't have to yell. <laughs> Sister Heather. Listen to the conviction of the first place of the Lord. Boy, that'll preach. Sister Rebecca. The Holy Ghost is a teacher, then we have to be willing to hear what he says. Amen. I've had some great teachers in my life, but the only ones that affected me was the ones I listened to. <laughs> going once, going twice. I'm being loud on purpose, Sean. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Anybody else got anything to say? This is a miracle night. We started late and ended early. All right. Oh, oh, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Timmy, will you come and take prayer requests? And